I just want to share um, a notice with you uh, about Harvest, which is next week. We are so thrilled to have Bishop Ruth with us. Uh, and it also happens to be a Harvest. And if you would like to help us to uh, celebrate Harvest, if you would like to... Um, to contribute to some organisations, there's a number of ways. So, the first is to, to the local Twerton Food Bank. Uh, we are inviting you to take some bags, which are at the back. If you want to take one or two or three, please do. And on every bag is a list. Every bag has a different list of three items. We're inviting you to fill up. When it says vegetables... Um, and meat. It's not fresh things, it's tin things that can be stored um, by people. So just think tinned whenever you read the things on this list. So that's one way. Please bring them back next week or in time for next week. So if you're not coming, please drop them into the office. Uh, that would be great. Local food bag. Next, send a cow. Emma, could you construct that little box? This is a little money box. We invite you to take there at the back and just put in as all your loose change if possible. And uh, well done, Emma. And we're going to bring that back again next week or in time for next week. And we're going to be collecting money for Send a Cow, which supports farmers in Africa. This year, um, Send a Cow are sending um, coffee seeds to female farmers to grow coffee crops. So fill in a box, bring it back. Uh, buy a Christmas card. Thank you. At the back, all the money goes to send a cow. And um, do you like cake, Emma? I love cake, Joe. Well, next week we're having a bake sale. A bake sale next week. Bake a cake, bring it here next week, and um, all the money raised, and then you can buy a cake as well. All the money raised, go off to send a cow. Finally, finally. Last thing, uh, if you'd like to contribute to your tea or coffee after the service, this week and next week, please, there's a basket on there, please do um, bring some money and just put in some money if you want to pay for your tea or your coffee. And again, all the money will be collected and given to send a cow. Wonderful. That's good. Now, I need, I need um, the younger generations to come and join me, children to come. I want to just tell you a little story. Austin, come here. We're going to listen to a story. Well, you can come down if you want. Yeah. Okay, so shh. Everyone else, listen. Listen up. So, um, who knows what the Bible is? you know what the Bible is? Yeah. In the Bible, there's lots of stories. And, and there's one story in a book called Matthew, chapter 10. Adults, take note. Matthew 10. That's our reading today. And um, about Jesus. Have you heard of Jesus before? Who hear Jesus is. And he's got lots of friends. He's collecting friends. How many special friends has Jesus got? Does anyone know? Twelve. Twelve. Anyone know the names of any of them? Peter. Fantastic. Pooh. Okay. Matthew's one. Well, did you know Matthew was a bit of an outcast? People don't really like Matthew. I'll tell you their names. Simon, he had another name. It was called The Rock. That's pretty cool, isn't it? Well, that's a whole other story about Jesus and the church. Simon and Andrew and James. Know anyone called James? Yeah, James. The lollipop man at school. Well, this, this guy was called James, but his real name was actually Jacob. They just changed his name because it sounded a bit too Jewish. But So whenever you read James in the Bible, it's Jacob. John, Philip, Bartholomew. That's a fun name, isn't it, Bartholomew? Thomas, Thomas, another Matthew, he was a tax collector, another James, how about this one, Thaddeus, can you say Thaddeus? Thaddeus! Fantastic. S no, Simon, the Canaanite, and Judas, Judas Iscariot, and they were Jesus' special friends, and Judas would later get replaced by Matthias. Anyway, so 
these friends of Jesus, they had seen him out and about doing all these amazing things. Do you remember the stories of when Jesus like changed um, water into wine? Do you remember that story? And when he, what else did he do? He, he created lots and lots of food for very hungry people. Do you remember that one? Do you remember any stories about Jesus um, healing someone who couldn't see, helping them to see again? And making, if they, they couldn't hear, he made them hear again. There was even one, listen to this one. Someone was dead and Jesus made them alive again. Isn't that amazing? And so he was, but he came alive, the greatest miracle of all. And so they'd seen him doing all these amazing things. And they'd heard him telling people about the kingdom of heaven. Now that's far too complicated to explain right now. But needless to say, there's, a, there's a, a place which is just perfect. And there's no wrong things there. Everything's right. Everything's wonderful. And Jesus said that special place is becoming a reality, is, is, is coming down now. I'm bringing that place right now, right here, right now. And you are invited to come and be members of that place to live in that place. So they, their special friends had seen Jesus do all these wonderful things and then Jesus said, now guys, it's your turn. It's your turn to go and heal people. It's your turn to go and tell them about this special place. And he said to them, you're going to go, go, just go to your neighbours, just go to your local friends. One day you'll go abroad, you'll go all over the world for me. But for now, I just want you to stay where you are in this place called Jerusalem. For us today, he'd say, stay in Bath, stay in, Jeru- in, in Twerton. And he said, you don't need to take anything for your journey don't need anything because I'm going to give you everything that you need through the provision. You don't need to find a special place to stay. You don't need to save up lots of money. You don't need food because that's going to be given to you. Do you know, he said, some people are not going to like what you have to say and they're going to be really mean about you. Has anyone said any really mean things to you? Yeah, well, he said they would say mean things about you, but... He said, I will help you to know what to say. I'm going to give you the right words to say. So he sent them off in his authority. He told them what, what they should say. He said that everything you would need would be provided for you. Just go. And that's it. Just go and tell the people what I want them to hear. And that's the story. Now... I think we need to see who's been listening really well to the story today. Um, Let's choose Emma, Ben. Okay, let's see how well you've listened. And maybe Lella as well. Should we see if they've listened to the story? So, you are going to go on a special adventure. Jesus has sent you on a special adventure. And I want you to pack for that adventure. Okay, pack what you think you're going to need for that adventure. Okay, so you guys watch as they do this and see if you think they've got it right or not. Okay, I guess start with a bag because that makes sense. We've got a bag and uh, I never, uh, oh yeah, I'll need my passport. Okay, yeah, get your phone. Oh, I'll get my, my thin jacket in case it's a bit chilly but not that cold. Right. And then I got my big coat. I'm going to start with my bag. Yeah. I'm actually, I'm, oh, not, yes, I'm hardly going to need anything. All I'm going to take, I think, I'm need is my yeah. cloak. Oh, plasters, plasters. Always fall over. Oh, yeah, your hair's all full without hair dry. I can't travel without that. But I will need my, my face mask. Travelling is very stressful. It drives me out. So I'm just going to have face mask. Okay, so I've got my cloak. Um, right. I need my staff. I need my Jesus sandals. Probably not, no. I won't go there. But I will need a candle. Make those hotel rooms. And they feel more like home. Right, um, what Emma, have you got? Oh, you forgot. Emma, you go, go. You'll Emma, need that. can I just say, you seem to be packing quite a lot of stuff. Are you sure you need all of it? Oh, yeah, I got, I've got to be prepared for every eventuality. As hot weather, cold weather, greys to the knee. I'm just prepared for anything. And then I can, I can do whatever God asks me to do. 
Do you, prepared. Do you think you might be being a bit over? Well, no, because he's God of the whole world. So I could be asked to do anything, anywhere. Yeah, but the thing is, Emma, hmm. I was really listening to the story. Was that, so and, was um, I? And I think what I learned from that was that actually we don't really need much at all because anything we do need, God will provide along the way. So all right, literally what have you all got? I've got... Is your cane? I've got my cane, my Please walking speak, please, cane. I get it. <coughs> I've got my, um, I've got my, my, my cloak. Actually, I've got some keys, but don't need those. Well, how will you get back Probably. in? Yeah, take them. Um, no, I think that's oh, literally all I'm going to... I'm worried about uh, you, Emma, Lella. I'm not going to need what a pop-up travel cot. <laughs> you will... Um, what, this, yeah, yeah, exactly. If you go somewhere fancy, you'll need I'm them. definitely not yeah, going to need will. sparkly and shoes. A matching bag. No, Emma, Emma, I really string, think you string. might be over... It always needs string. ...over packing here. I don't I, think I, I suggest am, Lala. you literally just empty it all out. Spare. Oh, I've got my poetry in case we get stuck at a train station. Oh, I need my phone number. Guys, 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 this is... There's no need to fight about it, OK? Lella, I know how lightly you usually pack, so I understand what you're saying. It's not true. And Emma, I, I know how, how you like to be organised. But um, let me just... I'm just going to get some pictures on the screen and then we can just run through a couple of things about how you've been packing together. Let's just have a look, shall we? Okay, so um, so Emma, how important is it for you to be organised? Oh, very important. I've got to be prepared for whatever God tells me to do. I will be ready. Any place, any time, I'm prepared. Okay, but that's not to say Lella isn't prepared. Do you think it's right to be prepared? I, I feel prepared because God's called me to do it. I know that he's going to... So you've got a special message to, to, to tell people. Yes. You've got people to heal, people yeah. to raise from the dead, yeah. no pressure. You've got <laughs> plasters to heal the... Okay, let's, let's, let's move on. So, so you know your job. You're going to tell them a message about the kingdom of God and to heal people, raise them from the dead, release them from things that oppress them. Okay, um... What about a budget? Uh, Lella, have you set a budget for this mission? Fundraising um, campaign? I mean, I've got just enough to get me started, but no, I've not really... Right. Do you think that's sensible? Yeah. But this is a, this is a trip that you're going to take. Mm. I've got enough to get me there. But don't you... Th uh, Emma, what, what's your take on that? Well, where is there? I've got my passport in case there is quite far away. I've got fundraise, I've got email support list, I've got a Facebook page, and we're gonna do an Instagram live. <laughs> ben, do you wanna add anything? No? Okay. <laughs> okay, we spoke about there. Where, where is it you think you're gonna go? Far, far away to the camels of Antarctica. Wow. Lella, um, I mean, if this is an international trip, right, do you think, have you got your passport even? Yeah. <laughs> I have got my passport, yeah. But, but is that what Jesus said? Is it an international trip straight away? What, or right now? No, I haven't actually got my passport in my bag because um, right now I just need to go and so, I just need to do, just need to go to my local area, see? Out there, I just need to get out there. I need to speak to people. I need to share them, share the news about Jesus, and that's all I'm being called to do. You're going to India. Well, you should join this this group then. <laughs> Maybe one day, son. Uh, well, what about where are you going to stay? So I I think I remember reading in this book that Jesus just said go to your local neighbours don't you don't need to book anyway don't need a tent or anything like that knock on their doors 
um, and say peace to you. And if they welcome you in, then to bless them. In, but, but that's, I mean, Emma, I'm not, not being funny, but I went through your work computer and I noticed a couple of search results. Can you just explain this find? Well, I mean, boutique hotels need reaching as much as the back end of places. And I'm ready, Joel. I don't think there's something wrong with searching. You know, yeah, Jerusalem, I can't wait. And it's going to be hot. I'm ready. Um, all places, all places. And I think God's really going to send me. And if you're going to send someone, you might as well do it properly. You don't, you don't just sort of go outside. You go properly. I think I'd better take that mic back from you. Okay. Um, so when people... Are, are sort of asking you about what you're doing in a sort of way that sounds quite critical, in a way that's quite like, are you sure you're doing what you should be doing? Like, what are you talking about, Jesus? Blah, 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 blah. Do you think you better think about what you're going to say in response to that? Do, Lella, do you think you better do some reading up? Um, I think, I don't think I need to make a big argument about it. I think I just need to walk away if it's, Thank you, Dan. <laughs> yeah, Is that India the right one? Can you tell we haven't run through this very much? <laughs> no, you're doing yeah. great. Great. Well, Emma, you're probably a bit more organised. Yeah. I have a five-point plan for each argument, um, and I will stick it out and tell them exactly what I think, and if need be, read the Bible cover to cover until it's really gone in. Okay, well, can I just remind you both of something that I think Jesus said? He said, um, don't be upset. Without knowing it, they've done you a mere favour. They've started an argument with you. And they've given you a platform for preaching the good news. Listen to this bit. Don't worry about what you'll say or how you'll say it. Don't worry about it because the right words will be there. And the spirit of your father will supply the right words. So... What I'm getting from all this is that we've just got to go. We've been given the words, been given the job. Put your We'd, stuff down, Emma. We're just going to go to the place that Jesus has called us to go, and he's going to provide for us every single step of the way. I think we should give these guys a round of applause. That was pretty good. Okay, um, we're going we're gonna to join together in a, a time of prayer now, um, and I hope we've all um, understood um, the message of listening to God and um, going forth in our own area and um, knowing where God has placed us in this, in this moment in time. So we're just going to, um, we can build on what you've drawn and what God was um, speaking to you when, you get, when we all gathered together around the table, um, and if... Um, God gave you any pictures or words, um, feel free to come and uh, speak to us and, and we'd love to share them. But we're going to um, pray together now. If we just start with a moment of quiet um, and we um, invite the Holy Spirit to be amongst us. We say, Lord, thank you so much that we have the privilege of gathering together each week and throughout the week. And we welcome your Holy Spirit here. We welcome your presence here. Lord, fall afresh on us, speak to us, show us where you have placed us in this city, um, in this country. Lord Jesus, we just, we're just going to spend a minute with our hearts actively open. Open your hands if you feel that helps you just to have um, a stance of being open to listen to the Lord. We'll just have um, a few minutes of, of quiet, quiet reflection and prayer um, and then will uh, lead in prayer from the microphone. And as I say, if there's anything um, that you feel God speaking to you, please do come forward and share that with us. Lord, I thank you for this city. 
I thank you that you've sent us here, that you've placed us here. And I I thank you, Lord, that we don't need to be prepared in the world's eyes, uh, that we don't need to have plans and lists and be overly organized and prepared for every eventuality because we have everything that we need in you, everything in you. And what we don't have immediately, we know that you'll provide, that you don't send us off alone, that you send us equipped with what we need. And that is the Holy Spirit in our hearts. And we, I thank you so much for that, Lord. And I pray for each and every one of us here that they would know that they have everything they need for their daily lives and that they can look to you, they can turn to you. And we can all look to you for, for strength, for guidance, for faith, for encouragement, Lord. You are everywhere. And Father, I thank you so much that we each carry that, that spirit of you, that we walk down the street and not only are we walking down the high street, but you walk with us, that it's not just little Christians on their own, but it's little Christians with the power of the Holy Spirit inside them. And that is a powerful thing. And if we think of this city as a whole and the, the sort of the weaving that that goes on of all these crisscrosses around, I pray that, that you would just really excite us, um, that we would see your passion um, for this city and for this area, Lord, that you would help us do more and be more and be more visible in this area for you, Lord. Amen. Amen. And Lord, as we look at this bit of paper and we kind of walk our way through the city. We pray, Lord, for uh, the, the breadth of this city geographically, but also in terms of just the makeup of this city and the people that make up this city. We ask your blessing upon every single one. We pray for uh, the disciples in this city, that they would become apostles, that they would be sent by you, commissioned by you in your power and your authority to go out and to communicate the good news of your kingdom. Lord, every place that's been written down and visually represented, we want to pray that your kingdom will come and that your will will be done and that you would transform these places and that every place would uh, just little by little feel more and more uh, like, uh, like your kingdom. Your kingdom breaking through in this map. Come, Lord Jesus. Come to us as a church. Help us to know that we have been sent by you. Lord, give us boldness and courage, we pray. Amen. Wonderful. Claire, if I can invite you. Um, So I was just listening to God, um, just sitting there and saying, God, what do you want to say to us and um, I saw um, a picture of a solar panel um, and I just felt that it was God saying um, really all a solar panel needs to do is just sit on a roof Um, you don't have to do very much and God's spirit comes down like the sun's rays and that solar panel takes that spirit and transforms it into power and energy Um, and that goes into the national grid often without us really knowing or without us seeing something happen Um, and I think God's saying that you know the power of God works through our spirit and through his spirit works in us and we don't necessarily see what happens but as we walk through these places and as we talk to people or as, as we don't even talk to them just we don't see what kind of goes on but God's spirit is at work so remember the solar panel hello I'm just going to quickly say hello to any of you that are new my name is Richard I'm the vicar here it's great to have you with us it's good to be reminded isn't it that we are we are invited uh, to join in with what God is already doing out there he's he, he actually doesn't need us He's already doing an amazing work in people's lives but he invites each one of us to come and join in and as Hello, hello. As, uh, I'm going to talk loudly. As, uh, as I was just listening to God, I had a picture of um, of oh, there we go, back on, of of a of a knife or or a blade that had become blunt, and and sometimes we can we can hear these kind of words and think, yeah, that sounds good, but I just don't think I can do that. Uh, I don't think I'm sharp enough. Uh, to be used by God. And um, there's, a, there's a really uh, helpful little verse in the Bible, in Proverbs, which says, as iron sharpens iron, so each person sharpens one another. And actually God, 
God wants us to help each other. And so I just encourage you, if, you, if that's you feeling, feeling a bit blunt this morning, and you just feel like, actually, I need someone to just really help me, uh, why not invite someone uh, to pray with you? Why not say to someone here this morning, uh, hey, do you want to pray together this week and just encourage each other uh, to, to remember that we can be used by God uh, and that it's his power, not our strength, not our gifts. It's, it's all about him. Uh, just encourage one another. Thank you. Thank you. Brilliant. Wonderful. And... Um... I was, as we were praying, I was just reminded of the, of the text itself from Matthew 10. It says this, don't begin by traveling to some far off place. That will come later. <laughs> don't try to be dramatic by tackling some public enemy. Go to the lost. Confuse people right here in the neighborhood. Tell them that the kingdom is here. Bring health to the sick, raise the dead, touch the untouchables, kick out the demons, You've been treated generously, live generously. Don't think you have to put on a fundraising campaign before you start. You don't need a lot of equipment. You are the equipment. You're the blade. And all you need to keep go going is three square meals a day. Travel light. Travel light. Just go. Just go. And I will do the rest. That's what Jesus says. Um, Rachel, in a minute we're going to have...